So Sushkash was founded on the mission of solving problems that really matter uh, by driving decisions that really matter through data. So if you look around us today, right, it's it's kind of funny that it's so easy for me to find a great restaurant around me that serves Italian food under 500 rupees, which has the best ratings from my friends. But if I had to find a school to send my sister to, which has the best teacher attendance and, you know, the, the lowest uh, uh, kind of, you know, monthly uh, rates right. and things like that, it's incredibly difficult to find that. Similarly, Google Maps will tell me the quickest route home, but, you know, it won't tell me the safest route home. Um, and as you take this problem a little upwards, if you look at, you know, the way our national level healthcare budgets are allocated, um, when every day there are decisions that are being made that can affect quality of life, healthcare, education, infrastructure. And unfortunately, these are the decisions that typically get made on the basis of very little data or no data in most cases. Um, so we have founded Social Corps and can we use the same concepts of big data analysis, visualization and bring it to places that really matter. Um, so what we've built is a decision-making platform that is really modeled around the way a typical decision would be made, right? So if you look at the way a decision would be made in a large organization, uh, typically you would hire a consultant. This consultant would go conduct a primary research. Then they would search for secondary data online. Then an analyst would take internal data, crunch all of this, put it together, finally create a report. And based on that report, a decision is being made. Um, now, there's a reason why there is only a certain set of organizations that can, you know, use this consulting approach to actually make a decision because it's going to take you six months. It's going to take a large amount of resources uh, um, to make that happen. What we've built is a platform that is modeled around this that uses technology and, data, um, and, and big data concepts in ways that can accelerate this process, taking that six month process and converting it into one day process in a lot of ways. Uh, so we have four products built on our decision making platform, A to collect primary data, uh, which is a mobile app that is being put in the hands of, you know, incredibly remote rural workers, um, where they can collect data um, completely without internet on a 2000 rupees phone. Um, we've taken a lot of secondary data that's out there in the form of PDF files, Excel sheets, made all of this data incredibly easy to, you know, search through, make it machine readable and so forth, so that, you know, that entire secondary data search process, you know, can be done in like a, in a day, for instance. Um, and then we've, you know, built tools to analyze data, clean data, um, and visualize data. So, you know, how do you uh, finally take all these mountains of information and convert it into that one easy visualization that can help a decision maker make a decision literally in a second. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what we do at Social Cops. So the way the platform's built is it's built in a very plug and play manner so that uh, because every decision is unique, right? So every decision will need different kinds of data, different kinds of things to support that decision. So for instance, the platform has been deployed in multiple different ways. So we work with about 150 partners across about seven countries. Um, and uh, so for instance, we work with philanthropic organizations. So recently there was a philanthropic organization that had an $8 million fund to invest in small and marginal farmers. So now they wanted to decide, okay, so between these three states, which district should I focus on? So there they accessed our secondary data and they visualize this data to you know be able to say okay based on my priorities these are the places where i should be investing in so that i can create the maximum impact um, in other cases so for instance uh, we work with the tata trusts and uh, the government of uh, ap in vijayawada where um, um, one of the members of parliament mr k c Nene, was involved in creating a model constituency now how do you create a model constituency right so uh, Ideally, you want to lift every single citizen out of poverty. You want to be able to ensure that everybody gets access to the needs that they want. But how do you really plan for that? So there they collected primary data uh, using the platform. Two, then we put all of this data together um, and we visualized it in ways to understand for every single citizen, what are the things that we should be doing to improve this person's quality of life? Um, so we created a very micro-targeted plan for every single individual and then upwards from there, every single village, every single district, and then made it very easy to compare and contrast and say, hey, uh, if I want to invest in toilets, then this is the cluster of villages that has lesser penetration of toilets. So I should be going here to invest and things like that. So I think one of the very interesting things about the platform or, or the way we've built it is that the minute you create one kind of a use case, then it becomes a template and then it becomes very easy to replicate that not just in, yeah, in, in the same use case, not just in India, but also outside. 
So uh, we actually challenged about trying to, you know, so one of our partners, uh, one of our non-profit partners, Goonj, was involved in the Nepal earthquake relief efforts. Um, and so when the Nepal earthquake happened, we called them and said, hey, is there anything we can do to help? And then we realized that one of the biggest problems that happens during a disaster is the fact that aid comes from everywhere, right? So relief is, fly, you know, flows to, you know, different places, but nobody knows where should I be sending these relief materials? Okay. So on ground, does that area need rice? Do they need clothes or do they need oxygen cylinders? Nobody really knows that. Uh, so what, you know, in, in Nepal earthquake, we made like a very small intervention where we, you know, just tried to optimize that relief effort and inventory management at, at the warehouse. But then the minute the Chennai floods happened, we were able to take that work with, you know, all of the non-profits that were working on ground to solve that problem of a... Uh, we had non-profits doing damage assessments to understand what is needed. On the other hand, we had uh, organizations in their warehouses actually using the, uh, the mobile-based data collection tool for being able to understand what inventory is going out of my warehouse. Uh, and so when we were able to match this, we were able to say, okay, there are, you know, six kgs of rice going to this area and it will reach by six hours. So nobody else needs to send rice there. So send something, send, you know, but these are the things they need. So, you know, it's it's technically just what happened. Like Amazon does this so well, right? Um, for for a e-commerce delivery chain, but nobody does that when, you know, like you, you have a disaster. And that was where we kind of um, intervened with our, with our tools and technology. So I think a couple of things, right? So ultimately... Um, so technology will always be just an enabler, right? right? Technology, data, a platform, um, there are already great people on ground. They're already doing a lot of, you know, good work. There's already a lot of good intentions. We want to play the role of enabling them, um, improving their efficiency, uh, and, and just ensuring that what money is being directed can be directed in the right places and channels. And can we just help decision makers make better decisions? Uh, so, you know, one of the things you realize is that one of the biggest challenges now in India is that uh, the more remote you get, there is absolutely no internet, right? Like there is, uh, there are challenges of infrastructure. So we had to really learn how to adapt the technology that we build sitting here in our rooms to that rural remote environment where, so, you know, our app works completely without internet. It works, you know, on 2000 rupees phones. It works, it works for this user. So our average user is like the seventh class Marathi speaking woman who has never used a phone before in her life. So, you know, all these concepts of material design completely, you know, disappear because <laughs> it really makes no sense to this woman. So how do you ensure that uh, she is able to use this comfortably? How, how do you ensure that one and a half hours after she has a phone for the first time in her hands, she can start collecting data? So I think those are the challenges that we've had to, you know, grow into and we've had to realize. One of the things we've, you know, been, I think, and one of the only reasons why we've been able to build what we've built is we've been very close to our users we've been very close to our you know to, to the decision makers and at every point in time we, we only fell in love with the problem and not our solution so our solution has evolved but you know can we just make sure that uh, if this is a problem how do we keep evolving ourselves how do we keep improving ourselves so that we can ensure that we're solving the problem for our users so i think that I, I think understanding that you don't know the answers to everything, but understanding that nobody else does. And so, you know, you, you will never find out online. And so you really need to go there and figure out what that answer is. I think I think knowing that is probably um, uh, for people who come new, it's, it's, it's always a challenge to adapt to that kind of environment. But I think that's that's something that's very close to our hearts. So I think if I remember correctly, we closed uh, 2015 with about uh, 45 million uh, uh, data points, primary data points collected from the ground. Uh, we had about 1 billion secondary data points that we collected via, you know, secondary data sources. Um, and then we took this and we've, you know, the platform is being used for decision making by another 150 organizations in different ways and forms um, in about seven countries right now. Can we drive all the important decisions that could change the future of the world? Um, uh, but, you know, on a scale perspective, something that we hope to do is can we provide the APIs to something like Google, right? Uh, you know, so today you when you when you hover on a school in Google, you only see uh, the address of the school. Can we actually, you know, help every citizen actually see, you know, five other things about the school, you know, like the teacher attendance, you know, the midday meal schemes, uh, you know, uh, the, the, you know, the rates, the enrollment rates, you know, multiple kinds of things that will help people make decisions about schools. Um, and this is just one example, right? But, you know, I, 
on a scale perspective you know i'd say google maps is where you know we see scale and can we power something like a google maps um, and on a decision making perspective i think um, can we you know ensure that every single district collector in in india every single you know um, state official every single government makes decisions based on um, on our platform can we ensure that you know we're using data effectively to drive really important decisions